Hey there guys, this is Victor with Victor Vector JKU and today Project Vector is going to get a reverse camera. Stay tuned. So I could not find anything online that said that my head unit could accept a backup camera. The navigation units do have the ability to, but they did, I couldn't find anything on the model that I have. And so then what I did was a little bit of research and I tried to figure out a little bit more and I ended up finding out that my head unit does look like it can accept a reverse camera. So my head unit is um, model RBZ, which you can see it's located in the bottom right corner of the unit. So it took me a little while to figure out where that was located. If I would've just actually looked at the head unit for about two seconds, I would've probably seen it. I was able to look up RBZ online and I found out that, that that unit does accept a camera. And so I was like, okay, why not? So before I pulled apart the dash and everything, I decided, you know, I'm just gonna order a camera off Amazon. So I'll go and put a link to that camera that I picked up. So that way you guys can use that if you decide that's the one you wanna go with. But you okay guys, so there's really nothing too special about this kit. It came in a no name box, came with a little instruction manual, your reverse camera comes with plenty of length of wire and has a little connector right here that you can go ahead and disconnect so that way you can feed this smaller connector through the fifth door so yeah so this was route basically through the cab up to the front uh, plug into the back of the radio and this guy routes to the back and then it also came with two different video jumpers that plug into the back of your head unit and so these guys if you look at them you can see that they're actually pinned in different locations. So this one's slot two and three in the top, and this one's slot five and six. This is gonna depend on which unit, uh, which one I need to use. So what I'll do is when I get in there, I'll plug them both in, or I'll plug one in at a time, test with the camera, check reverse, make sure it uh, turns on. Then it comes with a few of these splice cables, some zip ties as well. And then it also comes with the spare tire mount as well. So that guy will just go right onto the studs that are currently there. The camera will mount up right through here. So. Alright guys, so what we're going to need here is we're going to need three tools to be able to disassemble this upper dash panel to be able to access the head unit. So what we're first going to do is we're going to need a trim removal tool. We'll use that to pop out the window control. We're going to need a seven millimeter socket um, to be able to remove the seven millimeter bolt up here one behind here and two on either side of the steering column and then because I do have the vector JKE dock I'm gonna need a four millimeter Allen key to remove the two cap head screws from the JKE dock so we'll start by popping this guy free so what we'll do is we'll just come in from the side there while pulling outwards and just slide that in there and pop it free. Then you got to get in here, you got a little red clip you got to pull up on to unlock the plug. And once you do that, and that'll come free. So that's going to expose our first seven millimeter screw there. So we're going to get that guy going. And then make sure you don't drop him back into the dash. I'm going to set him in this cup tray just to keep a safe place for him. Go ahead and move the 7mm from the top. And then we have to pop this trim panel down. So what you can do is you can just slide your thumbs in right in between the column and the panel. And then you just sort of pull just straight, straight back and down. And that's out of the way. So that exposes the two 7mm that are under here. So we're we'll going to get these guys going. All right, that should wrap that up. Now, just gotta remove the Vector JKE dock. And these guys aren't on very tight, they don't need to be. And I'm just gonna be cautious not to lose the screw or the washer down into the vent ducts because that would be a real nightmare to have to go fishing for. All right, there we go. So, I'm gonna go ahead and take my phone down from the mount there, and then with that, my JKE dock comes free. So, that gets me free. I'm gonna go ahead and move my CB out of the way. Set that on the ground. 
going to move these guys out of the way. They don't get damaged or cause any damage to the dash. And then there's one last thing. So I do have my um, Hike It throttle controller on the left-hand side of this upper panel. I need to disconnect that before I can remove it. So, all right. So I have everything disconnected now. So I'm good to go ahead and just pull this panel off out and away. First, I'm going to drop my column down. That way I have more clearance around the column. And what we're going to do is we're just going to basically pull the dash straight away. It's just being retained with pop-in clips. So with that, pull him out. It'll come right out like that. All right, so with that, now we have the head unit exposed. And we can get access to remove the four 7mm screws. All right. So that finishes that off. Now we can go ahead and just pull the head unit forward. That, I am able to see the back side and there's a plug right here. I'll go ahead and uh, put an image in the right hand corner that shows this. Okay, so the next thing what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and grab each one of the jumpers. I'm gonna plug in the camera, I'm gonna power on the car, put it into reverse, and I'm gonna check and see which one it is that I need to use for the correct pin out on the back of this guy. So one thing I just remembered, uh, <laughs> I also need a power and a ground to power the camera. So what I'm going to use is just this little 9-volt uh, battery. So we'll go and get this guy hooked up to see what we come up with. We can connect the yellow auxiliary cable, get the power on. guys on and our hot wire and there we go cool first time's the charm I guess so we got our little reverse camera so I can go ahead and wire this guy in everything's good to go when I pop out of gear it goes back to my radio when I go into reverse and it's on pretty cool I'm gonna get everything figured out for routing and we'll go ahead and show you as I go through the steps here, guys. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the camera from the rest of the harness. That way, it's just out of the way. It's less, not something I have to worry about damaging. And plus this guy's gonna be routing from the back end anyways. So what I intend on doing is I'm gonna route it down the back side, put it in behind the glove box, route it down to the passenger side kick panel, all the way along with the harness there going back. Similar. And we can go ahead and pull out the glove box as well. So the glove box pretty easy. We've got these two tabs just folded uh, pr pressure in and then that guy comes out so that's going to get me access into here and I can route my cable along there um, so initially I was looking at two different routing paths so I was either going to route the cable in through this little drain plug hole or not drain plug but this capped off hole here or I can run it in with where I have my CB antenna and the brake light cable going through based on the cable length that I have if I route it in through here through that hole around up behind here, through here, the terminating connector will end up just inside this panel, which is where I want it to land. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and keep it over here on this side because that's where everything else is running to right now. I also looked at the interior side ca uh, cable and that guy will be able to reach up to the same location here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start off with throwing the mount on. And okay guys, so got the screws installed. You can see them just right back here, just two little guys. My cable's routed through, coming down to here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and drill a hole through this grommet. I'm gonna start routing the cable through. Okay guys, so what I'm doing here, um, I already started off, I did my first drill through the grommet here. And what I did was I just used the smallest bit that I had. Now I'm gonna step up a couple of sizes. And what we can do is just a quick little test. See how the hole size is coming along. And so far, yeah, it's definitely still too small, too tight. So I'll go up to, it looks like a 1364 next. All right, we'll go for another shot real quick. Actually, this one looks like it might fit. So there we go. So I can go and call it good with a 1364 there. So one other thing that I did last time when I was feeding my coax cable through, I actually used some Vaseline to help guide it. I'm gonna do that same thing right now. You don't need a lot or anything here, just a little bit. 
And really what's gonna happen is this Vaseline's gonna end up probably wiping off onto the seal and that'll just sort of lubricate the wire as it goes through. There we go. So that made that go through really easy there. Now, everything else will just slide through really simple and I just have to cut this guy back based on the amount of cable that I wanna leave up in here. All right guys, so I'm losing a lot of my daylight. I don't have any lights that I can set up out here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and keep on working on this as long as I got enough daylight so I can see. All right, so I had to take a little break um, on getting the camera installed here. So I need to order some parts and I was trying to, again, still work off of a 12 volt power outlet plug that's in the back. So I ordered off of Amazon, just this little adapter here. So you have the two plugs so the male and the female, and then it comes out with a 10 amp fuse and you have your positive and negative terminals here. So I initially was trying to add back there, but I still don't have power. So I came up with another solution. So this guy does work plugging off of the 12 volt outlet here in the center dash. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap into that. I already started running the power for the camera down the line here and I ran out of cable right about here so what I just have to do is extend this a little bit further route that along the kick panel and then I'll route that just right along with this guy bring him up and then I'll have another point there and I'll just do a simple plug off of this end so I'm gonna do a splice off of this so I'm gonna cut this off I'm gonna put on a 12 volt socket similar to this guy that I have inside I'm gonna splice that on here, and then I'm gonna also splice in another a T off of it. I'm gonna make a connector so that I can plug in the reverse camera. All right, guys. So I went ahead and hooked up the uh, jumper harness in there. Let me go and show you what I did. So basically, what it does is just jumps. It just runs right in line. So you switch in this plug. It'll connect the female to the male that was originally here. And then what I did was. I actually ran the cables up over this little cast bracket in here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it very well, but there's a bracket right in here. Ran it up over that. And then from there, I was able to run it down right along on the inside of this panel here. And then I brought it out right at the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to splice in the lengths that I need here. And then I'm going to route that underneath this panel too. All right, guys, I also want to explain how I routed the video cable back behind the stereo as well while I'm at it. So basically I have it connected and then what I did was I ran it down and there's a hole back here which then allowed me to and I think maybe you can see so there's this pass through right up in there you can see the light coming through so what I did is I ran it up through that hole down and then from there I just ran along this harness and it's up on top behind it so ran it along that harness and then brought it in around behind the speaker box and then from there came down it's one of these two wires and that guy just routes that guy just routes from there all the way down along the trim here again through the trim underneath the carpet on the outside out over to here so all the way around ties in right here the connector is just right inside here and then this guy just routes out Coiled up a little bit of cable there, sent them out to here, comes up, and there's the camera. What I'm doing is I ended up leaving all of the cables underneath right here. So this is where I'm gonna leave the uh, 12 volt hookup, and the fuse is also right there. And then so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna route my CB power and antenna down through here, and then I routed up similarly the antenna coax cable up to the front as well so i'll i'll uh, solder on the tip to this and then this guy can feed in under here too and that'll be the connection that'll be nice and clean all i have to do is pop the cup holder and then i can disconnect it and take my cb out if i want because it's just a simple handheld unit yep. those cables then run down underneath the armor light floor system runs over to the b pillar trim runs underneath that Continues on underneath more of the armor light floor cover. And then I bundled up all of the 
excess cable right here. Put in two blade terminals and receptacles so that I can connect into the red and black power from the camera to the two whites of which one I labeled red so I could tell which one's the hot. Back to the power source. So what's cool about this is the way I splice it up, I can run my 12 volt here. I have the 12 volt down here. Plus I'm also feeding power back from my camera off all of that. Now I do also have a 10 amp fuse in line for the 12 volt for this guy and the camera. So just to show you guys that it works, go ahead and turn on the ignition here. And I can go and shift it into reverse and you can see there's the camera. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap up this install. All I have to do is just pop the dash back together. It's gonna be the reverse of the removal. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's install. So now you guys know if you have the 430 RBZ model of the head unit in your JKU and you don't already have a reverse camera, you can pick up this kit off of Amazon and install it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and throw that down in the comments. Also, I love to hear any feedback, anything I'm doing good, anything I can improve, let me know guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, then definitely hit the thumbs up for me. Um, also, if you're enjoying the content I'm putting out there, uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and sign up for notifications. That way you know the next time I'm dropping another video. We are Victor Vector JKU, and we are taking on this build and the trails with both direction and magnitude. Alright guys, have a great evening. Catch you next time.